Guys, um, so yesterday we posted on Facebook a, uh, a question um, basically wanting to know everyone's opinion on whether or not kipping handstand push-ups are legit. Um, it's come around as a pretty popular exercise and because um, of it, it's, you know, smashing times. And um, so we posted the question, we got a ton of comments and we basically figured let's talk to CrossFit HQ gymnastic coach uh, Jeff Tucker and kind of get the lowdown on the kipping handstand push-up. So we're going to give him a call right now. Let's see. Hello. <laughs> What's up, Tucker? Bam, look at that. Cheers. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, bush mills. Yeah, All right, there you go. Keep it limber. Well, you know, you got to be bendy when you do interviews. <laughs> you guys doing okay? We're doing all right. How about yourself? I am doing better oh. than I deserve. Happy birthday, by the way. Yes, yeah, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> yeah, I'd be shooting guns, but I'm afraid it would disrupt your camera recording. <laughs> How's everybody? Good, good, good. There's Matt behind the camera too. I don't know if you, you can see him. I right recognize your cameraman. I made sweet, sweet love to him. <laughs> <laughs> how could you not with that hair, right? <laughs> Matt, how are you doing, you little badass? I enjoyed every 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off topic so far. So, uh, <laughs> say hi to the I audience. Want to take it away and kind of explain right. the story behind what happened here. So, Jeff, um, we, we've talked a little bit before this. Uh, yesterday, we posted on. Uh, our Facebook page asking all our fans to talk about whether or not kipping handstand push-ups are legit or you know and I later on kind of posted on well if not or if so where should they be used um, in an athlete's progression whether as a competitor or as GPP so um, we got a lot of comments a lot of definitely on both sides of the fence. We wanted to talk to you about this and really have someone to talk to with authority. Well, I'm, I'm honored to get to uh, give an opinion. I appreciate it. I've, I've read some of the comments on there and I think there's some, you know, some very good um, uh, conversations happening. I, you know, and I think it's good to question things like this. It's nice to see that you uh, reached out to the community and brought up a topic that, that honestly we we discuss on a regular basis at my particular course. And I think the first thing that we should start with is, you know, what's your goal, uh, either as an athlete uh, or, you know, is what I like to refer to as the common man in CrossFit. And um, the reality is, at the end of the day, what we try to get people to do is understand they need to be working strict form before adding momentum to it. Uh, if your standard either at the games or in an open or at the wad or your weekend warrior event that you're planning allows a kipping handstand push-up, outstanding. But the reality is uh, most of the people that I, that I work with around the world, we try to get them to understand that a headstand push-up, which is really what we do in CrossFit, you know, when the top of your head touches the ground, it's, it's a three-quarter uh, range of motion at best for a press, an inverted press, uh, should be a strict form and it should be a strength movement. And uh, one of my biggest reasons for that is because if we talk about general physical preparedness and if we talk about being ready for anything, you know, what is that individual going to do when they are required to do a benchmark workout like Angie or JT or Diane, the strict range of motion? It changes the game. And uh, because of that, we try to get them to understand that all they're relying on is kipping momentum to finish a wad, then they're kind of robbing themselves of the gift of strength of that particular movement. Uh, so what we see around the board is individuals who have uh, tried to perform movements strict and realize they've got a chink in the armor because they've relied on strictly uh, kipping or momentum movement. That sounds pretty good. Um, so would you? Like more than you needed. No, no, that's, 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 that's good. good. That's deep. That's I, was, so deep. I almost started to cry. <laughs> so I, I understand. I, I create emotions in people that them themselves don't understand. <laughs> um, I guess my question would be then, what what I guess you're saying is, you know, you should learn how to do something strict prior to learning 
anything with momentum is what you said. So let's just say that you are an elite level CrossFitter or, or you know gymnast, or, and you're doing some sort of CrossFit workout that it would be faster to do kipping, just like kipping pull-ups or butterfly, um, and you already know how to do them strict, would you say that it's sort of an advanced movement then beyond it, or it just in general it shouldn't be used? And if that's the case, what's the difference between like a kipping pull-up, why would that be okay, and a kipping handstand push-up not be? Is it a, is it a detrimental movement, you think? or? Well, let me, let me go to Hill's Half Acre last year at the regional site I hosted. Um, the standard for the, the we allowed a kipping puller. However, your chin had to rise above and pass over the plane of the horizontal that you were pulling on, meaning the bar. Okay. So if you try to do a butterfly, you're not going to have any teeth, and uh, because your chin's going to be hitting that bar. Um, and what we saw right then in that particular movement was we were we were requiring requiring a very strict standard. Your chin had to come above the bar and pass over the top of that horizontal plane. Guess what that did? It slowed down your kipping movement. It made it more of a strength movement. And, uh, and many people finished that particular movement with a strict uh, a pull up. Uh, and the ones that did very well at it, the ones that did very well at it, uh, tended to have better uh, strict uh, pull ups. So, I wouldn't necessarily say that your movement is more advanced because you can kip. I would tell you that if you can kip any movement, you, you, you need to have an understanding of some prerequisites. 